bucks. So I need like 70% over the most people's max in order to feel anything. Do you have any like tinnitus? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm like a football player with my tinnitus. Mike tinnitus. Football star. Okay. I want to show you this while we're showing you um, insecure guys. This guy, I mean, he's one of the most insecure guys out there. Chrissy D, come on down. Why don't you put Chrissy D in up next? They're shopping around. They're pushing this Chrissy D on everybody right now. Christy Stefano. I mean, I really find uh, nothing redeeming. You know his best role was? Backyard Ball Wars. Each backyard contestant will have to build their own structure and a signet to drink. Backyard Ball. He was terrible in that, but at least that was, yeah, that was a good role for him. Uh, his stand-up is nonsense. His interviews are nonsense. And he's always making excuses and worrying. And Maybe he thinks that's his shtick. It's not. So we're going to show you this. Two clips because we saw him on Jimmy Kimmel first. And I noticed something about him. And it's these new sunglasses. I love when somebody gets new glasses. You know, like when Tim Dillon just got a new pair of glasses. Maybe we'll get around to showing you this. Tim Dillon got a new pair of glasses. It's making him very boring about the Iraq. So we've got this. <laughs> Chrissy and Jimmy Kimmel. And we'll watch this. Finally, they do a walkout. Usually on these clips, they don't do the walkout. Uh, you could kill that. Which is my favorite part of uh, a talk show is when they announce the person and we get to see them walk out. It actually get you chose what this person's made out of. Most clips of talk shows now, it just cuts to the person sitting there. You got to watch eight three-minute clips out of order of their appearance. And uh, I like a full start to finish. I need to see them walk out. It's very important to me. Here's Jimmy Kimmel, who's been playing with himself, too. Not in this video, but uh, uh, the latest video we saw, you could tell he got a procedure in between that surgery. Oh, my God. We'll be able to compare Check out his face now, remember it, and then grab me that clip of the Donald Trump. So uh, this is before his procedure that he just recently got. He did like a whole eyebrow lift uh, coming up. He's starting to look not normal. Uh, but here's Christy Stefano. You tell me if you notice anything weak coming out of Christy Stefano. Here. Our next guest is a very funny man from New York with a new show that teaches the young people about all the crazy things that happened before they were born. Super Maximum Retro Show premieres March 7th on Vice TV. Please welcome Christy Stefano. Oh, there he is. So he comes out and we think he's just doing this new look. Oh. We think he's doing... This new look just for TV, like you just put on a costume. So he's got these glasses here that you'll get to hear of more. And he's got this suit and a turtleneck and he's a whole new Chrissy D. Vice TV, please welcome Chris Stefano. This is a great look. You, you like look, this? Yes, you look very good. I feel like I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> okay. I'm sick of this one. Everybody who gets these, like, vintage glasses now has to. They're so insecure about wearing their, like, vintage frames that they go, ah, like Dahmer glasses. You know, this is up there with that mullet shit I was talking about. Or the color pink or all these other things that you can't get over. They're not Dahmer glasses anymore. First of all, Dahmer didn't wear anything like this. These are all very updated, modern versions on vintage glasses. Nobody is looking at you going, Dahmer, Dahmer. And if they are, they're just as out of it as you. Rarely does someone actually look like Dahmer. No one ever looks like Dahmer. And it's like, if you thought you looked like Dahmer, well, then why would you do it? Usually when I put on clothes, if I look in the mirror, I go, oh, I look just like Jeffrey Dahmer. I'd go, take the clothes off. <laughs> you know, unless it's Dahmer night, <laughs> in which we both dress up as Dahmer and fuck. <laughs> but here he is. He's too insecure about his new glasses. He can't just go up. Oh, thank you. When I came on this season with new glasses, I didn't sit there and go, oh, so these glasses. You know, so listen to this. 
is a great look. You, you look, like this? Yes, you look very I good. feel like I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> <laughs> you look like you didn't get the role of Jeffrey Dahmer. They're like, yeah, yeah but another. they're yeah, they're my dad's glasses. They're the only thing he kept in the divorce. Okay, so here's another lie. They're not your dad's glasses. He's kind of trying to pass this one off as real. I look like Dahmer right now. They're just my dad's glasses. He pass them to me. And he doesn't really make it clear that that's any sort of joke. Free Dahmer, they're like... <laughs> yeah, and if that is a joke, my what kind of joke is They're the only thing he kept in the divorce, so I figured, <laughs> you know... They got a nice pink tint to them. You like that? What year did your dad wear those glasses? Probably, See? Um, I- See, he thinks they were your dad's glasses. Nah, they're my dad's glasses. Now, the joke about the divorce, that's a joke. And now he's going, what year did your dad uh, wear them? And he's like, ah! Okay, let's keep lying. Pink tint to him. You like that? What year did your dad wear those glasses? Probably, um, I guess he got out of prison in 1983, so I guess. No joke, but you're not saying they're not my dad. (laughs) (laughs) The year I was born? (laughs) Yeah. Are you um, responsible for any? Okay, so your dad's glasses, look how you're sitting, and it's like, why can't you just wear the glasses? Why do they need to be a topic? That's not that crazy. Have you seen Tim Dillon's glasses? That should be a topic. (laughs) So, this was on Jimmy Kimmel. This was, um, what day did this come out? Six days ago. Then, he appears on the powerful one, J-R-E. Is there just a clip or we go into Spotify here? Yeah, is it? We go into Spotify. Oh, I don't know. You have a Reddit uh, poster? No, no, that's nothing. So, we're going to Spotify here, and we're finding Joe Rogan. This could take some time. We'll go. Oh, there is he is. Is it the playing podcast. for you? Uh, no. No. It's okay. I, I, oh, it is. I hear the music, but it's definitely not playing over here. Let me just click on it myself because this could create a lot of problems. Oh, look, Russell Brand was just on. Chris DiStefano. Let's see. Yeah, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Yeah. Train my day, Joe Rogan Podcast. This happens a lot. Let's try clicking on it down here. I can't figure out how to ever get this to work. We get an audio only. So we're going to close the app. This happens quite frequently. You used to see it on the Apple TV. You got to do three closes to get this thing to work. So you open it, you play it. You know it's not going to work. You open it, you play it. Then the video starts playing a little bit, then disappears. So you do another closure, and when you reopen it and try again, it works on the third time I've been doing this for six months, this system of three closures. Um, so it's a very normal thing. Let's see if it works this time. Here they, here they are. Here they are. Joe Rogan Podcast. Check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day. Joe Rogan Podcast by night. All day. Okay, we're going to just watch the beginning here. And we're up. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Good to see you, brother. Nice to see you. I like the shades. I know. I feel like Jeffrey Dahmer. <laughs> You feel like him now? That's quite the upgrade from looking like him. What kind of feelings are you feeling? Oh, the glasses are actually taking I him over. I feel <laughs> like Dom right now. <laughs> you feel like him? Because he didn't feel good. He felt illegal. A lot <laughs> of his feelings were illegal. So you feel like Dahmer now. I feel like Dahmer. His new merch is coming out in the Pablo font. Let's hear some more about these glasses. He's got to tell everyone he's Dahmer now. Joe Rogan Podcast, check it out. The Joe Rogan Experience. Train by day, Joe Rogan Podcast by night, all day. And we're up. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Good to see you, brother. Nice to see you. I like the shades. I know, I feel like Jeffrey Dahmer. Are those uh, Anthony Aiden's? Anthony Aiden. Yeah. Dude, Anthony Aiden okay. is that... Saint- is Anthony Aiden the ones that um, Fat Boy got and wore on Joe Rogan? Who's that fat comic's name? Who's everywhere? We can't get enough of him. That big fat ass who's always around Louis, two comics, two cigars. Robert Kelly. Robert Kelly. Are Robert Kelly's glasses? Because how does Joe know some glasses brand? Is that the same brand? Because remember when Joe Rogan got those grandpa glasses because Robert Kelly had the grandpa glasses? Wow, he's about to say, I think, but I don't know. Okay. M- those might be the ones he's about to talk about. Let's hear it. <laughs> it went too far back. And we're up. Hello, Chrissy. Hello. Yeah, I look like Jeffrey Dahmer. Nice to see you. I like the shades. I know. I feel like Jeffrey Dahmer. 
Are those uh, Anthony Aiden's? Anthony Aiden. Yeah. Dude, Anthony Aiden, St. Mark's, Lower East Side. Yeah. I wanted to, I have a- So um, not your dad. I wanted to look like a 70s, 80s, like mobster look mm. i want that's what i wanted to go for and anthony was like i got you oh uh, yeah that's you look know how uncomfortable yeah. he is anthony aiden this. and he's one of those guys like a mma guy so it's like you know he's selling these nice glasses but then he's got the cauliflower ear and he's got he's always got like bruises on his face yeah i met him in new york very nice guy he, he gave me a beautiful pair of you sunglasses you happened like, to like meet rope. his glasses salesman before you know the odds of that well he said he was an mma guy so I've just never heard. I mean, <laughs> imagine buying sunglasses and then the week you wear them, Joe Rogan knows the same guy that you bought your glasses. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> Even if you said sunglass hut, he shouldn't have known. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's hear some more. It's colored shades. Yeah. They're very nice. They're transition lenses. And yeah, the, mine too. And the thing is with these is this is, you know, I'm going for it, right? Oh, so and I've went, I've went a little crazy. And You're I, going for it? I'm just going for it. I've said, you know what? Enough's enough. Enough's uh, enough. I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm putting on glasses. I'm wearing a watch. Wow. You're wearing and a watch. watch you got? Uh, AP Royal Oak. Be aware of these watch guys too. I'm telling you. This watch thing is the sign of a bad guy. Nobody nice puts on one of these watches. I would love to have a beautiful watch, but I will never do it because it's just, what does that mean about you? That you're a silly person trying to show, guys, I'm coming through. I'm an established title. I'm an established man. I am weary about the people who get these watches and every comedian's doing it. They're the first people to do it. The comedians need to have a Rolex. And they always get like the most basic money watch, a Rolex or an AP, because they need people to know it's all about the signaling. And the comics all get it because they really want you to know, like Tony Hinchcliffe. I'm not just some guy you've never heard of. I've got this Rolex, as you can see. I'm very... Bert has one. Michael Malice... Uh, who's that other creep that was just on the uh, uh, first podcaster guy? The Adam Curry. Adam Curry just had one on. And I really, I'm just, you know, for my judgment here, and this is something I should be all for, you know, as a person who really engages in the finer things, loves quality. I mean, everything around here is designed by watchmakers. <laughs> desk, this tray, this microphone was designed by a German watchmaster for me. They're saying the watch that he has is like 200k. Yeah, so listen to this little story here. I've went, I've went a little crazy. and You're going I, for it? I'm just going for it. I've said, you know what? Enough's enough. Enough's uh, enough. I said, I'm done. I'm, I'm, I'm putting on glasses. I'm wearing a watch. Wow. And I'm changing. What kind of watch you got? Uh, AP Royal Oak. Ooh, that's a nice watch. I just came, I See talked to Andrew joke. Santino and I said, I oh, want to watch. Listen. And he sent me this link and I said, but what about that price? He said, if you're going to do it, just fucking do it. Listen wow. to this shit. And so he, and then I did it. And then when I sent him a picture of it on, he was like, dude, I was kidding. Like you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you just jumped like tens. So you didn't know, like most guys are wearing like an $8,000 fancy watch, you know? And he just thought, oh, these watches, these people wear, they're about 200 to or 500. Well, he knows that 200K is way above his pay grade as a guy. So he had to come up with some excuse reason why he spent so much. Well, on even his so, watch. I mean, he still has no business for 200K. I mean, you need to be making like millions and millions to get a 200K watch for that to be a natural thing. That's what I mean. Otherwise, you're just being like absolutely stupid. Uh, and that's what he's being. And that's now, very. If you hate Bert, you have to hate this guy. Come on. Like, if you hate, like, Bert's lie stories. All this guy does is make shit up. He's at on McAdam. Listen to like, this. Like, go to 430. Well, I think there's a little bit more here, maybe. <laughs> and then he said, What is, you're like a different Chrissy with these glasses. And I know, I said to you before, I'm wearing them every day. I haven't taken the watch or the glasses off in about two weeks. And I feel good about it now. I feel centered with who I am. But it does no, you feel don't. like, you know, a month from now, I'll look back and really regret this phase. Why? Because I think that, um, 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 I, uh, listen, I'm having fun. Right. Uh, right now, it's no regrets. But I'm just saying I know the way my mind works. And I think I'm probably going 
too hard, too fast. Like I just, you know, the glasses, the watch, you go, I got a tour manager. I don't need any of this. I'm just going. And, and this guy has like the same amount of money as Steve Renazizi. <laughs> and he did the, even Joe's like 200,000 is like way higher than what these people are doing. Okay. That's like producer Michael does a, you know, it's not normal. It's psychotic. Especially if you've never had a luxury watch before. You haven't worked your way up to this goal. Okay, we're going to jump to 430. My old bedtime. Uh, and we're going to hear what he says here. What's this one about, Jules? Just, just an ad on a lie. A I'm lie sure tale. that this episode is full of tales Filled. such as these, but I fell asleep. Yeah. So here's so, just one example. Chrissy D, what he does is he feels you out. He starts telling a story, and depending on you know how you're going, he's going to... You know, if you're lo- if he's losing attention, he's going to add in a big whopper there to get your attention again. And if you're laughing really hard, he's going to add on about four more parts to keep that laugh rolling. Junior, see what he does when here. he was in his peak in his prime, was as good as anybody that's ever laced on yeah, clubs. Yeah, I agree. Did you watch the Paul Fury fight yesterday? Yes, I did. Yeah, yeah. what'd you think? I thought it was a very good fight. Yeah. And it's, it confirmed two things that I've been saying for a long time. One, Jake Paul is one. What do you think is what somebody asks when they want to be agreeable with you first and they don't want to say the wrong thing that maybe is the opposite of what you're going to say? So Chris Stefano is always going, what did you think? Yeah, that's pretty much what I thought. Or will he? Let's find out percent legit people that think he's not legit he's conning you he's conning you with his antics he's conning you with his his uh, online persona yep. and the shit talking and the marketing but if you didn't have any of that and me as an analyst like i that's right. one of my jobs I, I analyze mixed martial arts i'm not a boxing analyst but i understand it right when i watch him move around it's 100 percent legit when i saw him knock out tyron woodley i'm like that is a fucking dangerous man yeah 100 percent. yeah he's i was watching it illegally on uh a why phone. don't you pay for it you I, fucking piece of shit i didn't know i i because I, I ran out of money i Get watched- the- <laughs> i was watching it illegally which is kind of against Joe's industry. You know, he hates that they're from the UFC. Pretty And rude. their big thing is they hate illegal watching. So Chris says this, and Joe goes, why would you do that? And he's like, ah, da, da, pa, pa, da, 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 da. Let's hear these add-ons. Shit. When I saw him knock out Tyron Woodley, I'm like, that is a fucking dangerous man. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah, he's, uh, I was watching it illegally on uh, a why phone. Why don't you pay for it, you I, fucking piece of shit? I didn't Whoa. know, I, I, because I, I ran out of money. I, Get bought, the- I bought too many glasses. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I spent it all on the watch. Uh, no, because I didn't even know. I, I love sports and stuff, but I'm not into, not that I'm not into boxing. I just don't ever like watch it that much. And so the, the guy that I'm with, he was like, oh, the fight's happening now. So he's like, I got a site. And we started, we were, I was eating uh, ice cream yesterday in San Francisco in Little Italy. And, we're, and I only eat sweets once a week now. So yesterday was my sweets day. Nice. And I was eating, um, I ate, I got four scoops of gelato. So I was three and a half scoops in and the blood sugar, the way it hit, you know, I was getting getting woozy but it's like what i've been waiting for and i'm watching the fight happen and then you know san francisco Mm. right outside i see two homeless guys fighting like legitimately fighting and it was kind of one of those things where i swear to god even though amazing fighters that that you know paul and fury the fight outside was so much more entertaining i mean i've never seen this i saw a homeless man yesterday in front of as the kid out in the green room as my witness roundhouse kick another land around Kick no, to the chin. No, no. Another, the other homeless guy's face. The guy hit yeah, up. If anything, look at Joe's face there. <laughs> oh, That's a great shot. Hold on, wait for that to clear Joe. up. So Joe is fooled by this, and see, then uh, you know uh, he's taking cues. Hold on, we'll wait till this clears up. You know, then Stefano's taking cues. Oh, Joe really likes this. What do they do? A roundhouse. Get, it's probably you know a bum fell into another bum, and then they walked away. Maybe there was a yell, and Chris goes, "What was that? Two bums fighting while the fight's on? Huh?" Let me uh, think about that for a sec. Now it's a roundhouse kid. I think that he was just watching the fight on his phone outside, which is slightly odd. And then since he's watching a fight, his he was like, and those bums fighting yes. around me. <laughs> so, yeah, Joe's like a roundhouse kick because that's actually pretty technical. Bums usually don't break out roundhouse kick. So I can't wait to hear this. So can you, is there a way to go back on Spotify without doing 15 whole seconds? That's a big jump. I know. There's got to be a way to just snip back a 
tad, huh? One of these buttons should do the trick. But they don't. Okay, let's just see if we could... Up against some outdoor dining, was like shell-shocked, like, you know, like woozy, bleeding from his lip, and then just scurried off. And I was wow. like, wow. Here's and another. then I bought the homeless then, guy who won the fight ice cream. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. When they say I swear, that means I lied. I lied. So you bought I mean, the winner of the I fight. It all came around. All day of my life is Bert sucks. Bert's such a liar. Bert's stories are so annoying. Bert's this is stupid. Bert. He's like worse than Bert Way in worse. my opinion as far as lie stories go. It's Every all single lies. time I've ever heard him speak, it's something like this. So let's listen to that add on one more time. Just see. The chin. Another, the other homeless guy's face, the guy hit up against some outdoor dining, was like shell shocked, like, you know, like woozy, bleeding from his lip, and then just scurried off. And I was wow. like, wow. And then I bought the homeless guy who won the fight ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> I, sw I swear to God. But did you know whether who who instigated the fight? Maybe the homeless guy with the roundhouse kick is like a crack stealer. I was going to say, I think most likely fentanyl instigated the fight. <laughs> <laughs> I would feel like fentanyl would calm it down. Yeah, yeah. that's true too. See? It was. Details. I don't know if one's last thing you've been to San but I mean, it it got, uh, you know. It's pretty wild. It there. was wild there in North Beach, you know, Little Italy. So and I was like, we had Man, Xander and CJ Brown <laughs> check the news. There are no reports of a roundhouse kick bum fight. Sorry, lie, caught ya. Then I bought him ice cream and then like, turned out he was like an amazing chess player and beat this guy and he's like really rich now and then, uh, no. <laughs> it's all a lie. Prove it. Prove this in a lie or I'll see you in court. Chris <laughs> Stefano. he's insecure, he's doing add-ons. You know what was really funny? I was on DoorDash, the app yesterday, one of my favorite apps, this DoorDash Sometimes I'll do six orders at a time just to see all those maps <laughs> go crazy. And like I said, I've got DoorDash Extreme. We actually have an intercom button on my phone. Press to talk to driver in real time walkie talkie. And I press, I go, hurry up. Thank you. You know, and I get this guy. I see him all over the map. Uh, I also have a new feature that I'm installing with DoorDash where I could take the phone take their dot on the map, and if I need them to be there faster, I could speed them up by pulling the dot with my finger, making their car go upwards of 200 miles an hour to my house. So I'll go like, and this guy's like, ah! Did you see that crazy car accident in LA where the lady was zooming? She like shot through the intersection at like, so high speeds and crashed and killed all these people. No, we don't live in LA. Here, wait, How would I have possibly seen that? Idea. I don't live in Los Angeles well, anymore. Well, well, no, no, no. I moved out of Los Angeles 17 years ago. Sorry, I'm Jewish. I'm a Jewish old woman. Um, so, uh, yes, DoorDash in the app. And DoorDash, what was I bringing up? Uh, I love the app DoorDash for many reasons. Jesus Christ. I, I was, like, going to go somewhere with this. <laughs> Sorry. I love the app DoorDash, I've installed. That was just a joke, an add-on. Oh, yeah, that's what it was, add-ons. You know how we call these things add-ons? <laughs> so I'm on DoorDash, and uh, I forgot what I was ordering, but there was a little column. You scroll down, you pick your main thing, and then it says add-ons. I showed Jules, I go, look, it says add-ons, like what the guys do. So... Wait, yeah. I have the video DoorDash of you now. using DoorDash Extreme. Yes, let's see, me using DoorDash Extreme... Which I would love to do that. There should also be a way to execute the DoorDash driver after the food's been delivered. Like you press a button on the app and they incinerate. Who do I hate too. delivery drivers? Even if they're the nicest, fastest, I always adjust the tip to 0, 0.00 afterwards. Here it is. Uh, I tell them I screw them. You know what I do on DoorDash? I do like a $200 tip. And when they see that increase, you know, they don't get to see the tip, but they see the total. So they go, okay, the Cheesecake Factory here for one person, you know, a hamburger. But then the bill is three seventy five here. I must have a $200 tip. I'm going to race to this guy. <laughs> I grab the food out of that sucker's hand. I go, wait, 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 sir. Sir, don't go away. He goes, what, sir? Thank you for the tip. Is that what you wanted? I go, yeah, oh, about the tip. And then I show him in real time. <laughs> and I adjust it. And I show him that it's now been adjusted to zero. And then I've reported him also for being unprofessional and harassing. <laughs> and I go, get out of here. Now! <laughs> and it works every time that you can trick these idiots into speeding to your house. Okay, here is a video example of me operating that DoorDash driver's car. Yes. Okay. 
This was in L.A. Josh Denny territory. Let's ch- let's check it out. I'm excited. I haven't seen this one because we're watching an intersection. Cars are going, and it's just a four-way intersection here. It all looks pretty normal to me. A nice, beautiful day in San Bernardo Valley. I can't see anything wrong yet. Oh. Wow, look at that. Yes, that would be great. Can somebody make a mem of this? Look at this. So right here, we'll pay attention. And yes, it's pretty silent, but you see a car. That's what happens when you This is my DoorDash driver here. Watch my DoorDash. There he comes. And then believe me, he's reported if that food is even one bit burnt. (laughs) Overcooked. My food was overcooked from the fiery crash of your... Irresponsible driver when I was operating his car to 200 MPH. <laughs> okay, let's see what we can do next here. There's so much good stuff. Um, 